Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Josh Winiarski and I'm a photographer, filmmaker, and vlogger here on YouTube as well as Instagram. And today I'm gonna be sharing with you five awesome photography products that are gonna make you a better photographer for under $20. I know it's right before the holidays, so this video might be just a tad late, but hopefully it's up in time, so if you wanna grab one of these for someone you know, you can, or if after the holidays you've got a new camera or a new lens and you wanna take your game to the next level, hopefully you can pick this up for yourself for relatively cheap, and it'll help you take better photos. Also, it's kind of annoying that I feel like I have to do this, but I'm not being paid to promote any of this stuff. This is stuff I've actually used over the past year or two, and it's helped me in photography. This is stuff I love, stuff I use pretty much every week, so, with that being said, let's get into the video. And right off the bat, we've got the Manfrotto Pixie Mini, a small, lightweight tripod that I, I can't say enough good things about. Last spring, I was in New York City, and I actually went to B&H and found this guy for around $16 or $17, and I've been using it religiously ever since. This thing is small, it's lightweight, and actually was my replacement for my Gorillapod. I use this more than my Gorillapod, and it's way cheaper. When I'm taking photos, when I'm making videos, pretty much whatever I'm doing, I try to put this in my bag because I never know when I'll need it. It feels incredibly durable. All like the friction on like the legs is super perfect. They just hold their position. It doesn't feel like they're just flopping around. Put them together. It's great for vlogging. It's great for low to the ground shots. It's super quick to set up, super quick to adjust. If you don't have a small tripod or you don't have a travel tripod, for under $20, I can almost guarantee at some point this is gonna help you out. Now with that being said, it is worth noting, this is not meant for massive cameras. If you're using something like a Canon 80D or a similar sized crop sensor camera with a lighter lens, it'll work fine. If you're using some mirrorless cameras, again with lighter lenses, it should be fine. But if you're using a full frame camera with something like a 24 to 70 hanging off the front, this is not the tripod for you. There's a reason it's so cheap. I think it's rated for around two, two and a half pounds tops. But for smaller or medium sized cameras, this is so handy for the price. I literally love this thing. Up next, we've got an intravolometer. This one in particular is from newer, newer. If you look at budget gear, you know what I'm talking about. No idea how to say the brand, but it's awesome. Now an intravolometer has a fancy, Kind of scary name, but it does a pretty simple task. What it does is it hooks into your camera via this cable and allows you to operate it remotely, and a lot of the time will add extra features that your camera can't normally do. For instance, my camera only does long exposures up to 30 seconds. With an intervalometer, you're gonna be able to take long exposures of any length you want. This is gonna let you go 45 seconds, a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, two hours, really as long as you want. On top of that, it's great for time lapses. You can set them up for any duration, any frequency that you want. Super handy if your camera doesn't have a time lapse feature or you just wanna do it via a remote instead of going through all your settings. You can shoot in intervals, you can shoot with a delay, or you can just eliminate camera shake instead of pressing that shutter. You're wireless, you're not touching the camera. You just press the button on here and your pictures won't have any shake at all. But maybe my favorite feature is you can have complete control over the shutter with this button and switch here. So normally when you take a long exposure, you set the time beforehand, press the button, and the camera opens the shutter and closes the shutter in the interval that you inputted. Input? The interval you wanted. Now, for the most part, this is gonna work as you want, but what if something's moving through the frame and you need complete control over how long that shutter is open? For instance, let's say there's a car whizzing through the frame and you wanna capture that with a long exposure. Most of the time, you're not gonna have control over when that car enters and exits the frame. You can't tell random drivers, hey, go now. It just doesn't work that way. With an intervalometer, you can wait till that car is about to enter the frame, press the button, your shutter's gonna open, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's out of the frame, bam, you close it. You can control the shutter on the fly, which is pretty dang cool. You might not have any idea how long it's gonna take the car to get through the frame, but you can have complete control over it. You have a direct line to your shutter, super handy if the situation calls for it. Now, there are definitely nicer intervalometers, and there are definitely cheaper ones. This one's under 20 bucks, feels a little cheap, uh, 
I mean, for whatever it's worth, it has a quality control pass sticker. The only thing that's kind of weird about it is it takes AAA batteries and there's no off button. So when I first got this, I was actually taking out the batteries every time I was done using it, putting them back in. But one day I just put the batteries in, took my shots and left them in. And that was like over a year ago and it hasn't died since. So it doesn't have an off button, but the battery life seems to be pretty good. Uh, AAA batteries, you know, I always just keep two extra in my camera bag. So whenever this does die, I'll be good, but it seems to last a long time. Up next, we have a cleaning kit. Yeah, kind of lame, but necessary. Okay, so hear me out. If a bird poops on your window, what do you do? Well, you hopefully clean it up. You get a rag, a paper towel, or you know, just spray it with the hose, whatever, you clean that up. You don't want bird poop on your window. If you get sweat on your sunglasses, rain on your windshield while you're driving, you'll wipe it off. Well, guess what? Your camera lenses are gonna get dirty too, you need to take care of them. Well, I hope a bird never poops on your camera lens. Your camera lens is gonna get exposed to the elements, dirt, rain, water, just little particles are gonna get stuck to it. Let's keep it clean. On a side note though, if a bird does poop on your camera lens, please DM me with a picture of it because that's kind of funny. Also, I'm sorry for your loss. Frankly, I don't really care what you get, but don't be using like, you know, your nasty t-shirt to clean your camera lenses. You want to take care of them, especially as your glass gets more and more expensive. You don't want to risk scratching your lenses just because you didn't want to buy a 10 to $20 cleaning kit. Again, I'll link one in the description below. Mine has like a blower. You can blow the dirt and debris off your lens so you don't scratch it when you're wiping it. It's also got like a microfiber cloth and like this optical lens glass and screen cleaner. Spray it on the cloth, wipe your lens down. Hopefully it gets rid of most of the smudges. And lastly, it's got a lens pen, which I really love. One side is a brush. One side is this like squeegee material. Really, really good. You can just wipe off all the debris and then just get rid of all your smudges and your lens will be nice and clean. Again, as you invest more and more in glass, take care of it. You don't want to shoot and have little smudges or a loss of resolution just because you didn't clean your lenses. That's silly. That's dumb. Just get a cleaning kit. I don't really care which one. It's just going to help you out. Coming in at number four, we have an ND filter. If you're a landscape photographer or you've ever wanted to experiment with long shutter speeds, chances are you're going to need an ND filter if you're shooting outdoors. If we're shooting things like cars moving, waterfalls coming down, or something like that, an ND filter is going to be clutch unless you're shooting when it's really, really dark. I'm not gonna go too in depth on them in this video, but essentially it's sunglasses for your lens. It lets in less light, meaning you can have a longer shutter speed. Now, to be honest, $20 is gonna get you a pretty cheap filter, but if you're just starting out or you just wanna experiment with longer shutter speeds, it'll get the job done. I recommend checking out a brand like Tiffin. They have a few filters for under $20, and if you're willing to spend 30 to 40, you'll have more options, but they're great, they're high quality, and they get the job done for entry to intermediate level photographers. Now it is important to note that you're gonna need a filter with the same diameter as the lens you wanna use it on. So keep that in mind if you plan on looking and potentially buying one, but they're pretty straightforward aside from that. You just take the filter, screw it onto your lens. It's all set up, it's good to go. Also, if you're like me and you do video as well, they can be insanely helpful for shooting outdoors and getting a shallow depth of field without cranking your shutter speed and getting weird motion blur. If you want to learn more about long exposure photography, I've got a short little video on it. I'll throw a card on screen now, but without further ado, let's get to item number five. Now, this might surprise a lot of you, but number five, a fast SD card. So a little known fact is if you bought a camera, went to the store and just got one of the cheaper SD cards, figuring it didn't really matter. Ho oh, ho, boy were you wrong. If you just got the cheapest SD card, it's probably pretty slow and chances are it's actually bottlenecking your camera, meaning you're not getting the most out of it. So if you've ever taken a lot of photos consecutively, you'll realize your camera has a buffer. After a certain amount of photos, it'll slow way down. This might be kind of confusing, so here's a long example to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So right now, here's a relatively cheap SanDisk Ultra SD card. Let's put that in a Canon T6. Okay, so I'm gonna set a timer for 20 seconds. Let's see how many photos I can get in that time. <laughs> 
14 photos in 20 seconds. So you saw it took six pretty quickly and then it slowed way down. So 14 photos. Now let's try swapping the SD card. So this is a SanDisk Extreme SD card. Let's put it in, hopefully the correct way. And now let's see how many photos I can get with this card in 20 seconds. Okay, so quite a bit more. So as you can see, right when I swapped the card, I got one more picture in the initial burst. Instead of six photos before the buffer kicked in, I got seven, kind of cool. But then after that, and I hit that initial slowdown, it was still processing the photos faster, and I was taking more photos in the time frame. Admittedly, I lost track, but I think I got around six or seven more. Now, this is gonna vary a ton on the camera you're using. On something like my ADD, I'd probably get a lot more photos than just like six or seven more. But by spending like 10 more dollars on the SD card, my camera was much, much faster at processing photos. Now, if you shoot sports, this is obviously super handy. If you shoot portraits, it's also handy because if you just take a burst at any moment in time, maybe you wanna take another burst afterwards or the model wants to see the photos you took, your camera's not just sitting there processing photos and you're just kind of sitting there tapping your foot like come on we need to show them to them anyways a 64 gigabyte sandus extreme card goes for like 17 bucks on amazon right now so not super expensive but as you can see it's going to speed up your workflow it's going to allow you to take more photos it's a pretty good investment for the price doesn't matter what storage capacity you get that's up to you but this is the card i recommend to most beginner or intermediate photographers at this moment in time Anyways, there you have it. There are five cheap products that are going to allow you to take better photos that are hopefully going to make you a little bit better of a photographer. Hopefully you learned something new. Sorry it's been a while since I've uploaded, but man, it feels good to be back. I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me in the past couple months. Thank you. Happy holidays. And as always, if you liked the video, be sure to like it. If you have any questions, have any comments, hit up that comment section down below. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. My name's Josh Winiarski. Check me out on Instagram, and I'll see you all in the next one.